Okay, so welcome families. My name is Don Scheller and I'm the director of the Career Center. We could not be more thrilled than to share a little time with you on this gorgeous afternoon. Looks like Williams once again cooked up the perfect weekend. I don't know if everyone's looked at the weather forecast for tomorrow, but it looks just amazing. So thanks for spending a few moments with us on a beautiful day indoors. We hope this will be worth your while. Wanted to say a couple things and then really turn it over to the, the people who are going to give you the most information to my immediate left. So here's how this goes. We begin working with first year students literally at the moment of matriculation. So 63% of the first year class we've already met with individually or in a group setting. And it ends with them six months after graduation per our most recent survey, 90% in jobs, in graduate school, or in service volunteer positions. So that's 90%. So if anyone doubts the relevance of the liberal arts, um, those are some pretty solid numbers. Now in a moment, you're gonna hear how that magic actually happens. So I'm here to share the good news, which is the relevance of the Williams liberal arts degree. The challenge, of course, as you know, is to help them articulate where their interests actually land in terms of these first jobs after graduation and or graduate school programs. So we'll be happy to run you through a little bit of our program, how it works, some of the inside tips, and then really turn it over to your questions. So we look forward to those. So to my immediate left, Michelle Shaw, in just a moment, is going to share with you how the advising program works and how our career communities are structured and how your first year students can get involved. Don D'Elia will speak to the amazing superpowers of internships, both summer and January. Don has a long and storied career helping students find internships and funding those unpaid summer internships. And we strongly encourage first year students to get going on that process. Down the line, you're gonna hear from Teddy and Isabella, and they will they themselves are living the experience right now, and that's probably gonna be the most interesting part of the afternoon conversation, so I look forward to that. So again, feel free to ask any questions. Um, we'll probably hold that right to the end, but we welcome you and enjoy your participation in supporting your sons and daughters as they travel their future job and internship process. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. So I know you all um, want to hear from the students, so I'll make this very brief. Um, my name is Michelle Shaw. I'm class of 95 and a former attorney. Um, I wanted to go back a little bit to my first job coming out of uh, Williams College. I, like um, many of you, was, uh, I was thinking, what am I going to do with an English and anthropology degree? And my first job out of Williams was in nonprofit and publishing, and that was really due to the sheer power of the alumni network, and I can't say enough about that. We, when I graduated, um, a lot of the focus was on getting students jobs in finance and consulting. We have stepped back from that model, and we have um, created five career communities which allow students to engage um, with a counselor like myself who's an expert in that particular area. If your student doesn't know what they want to do, we also offer um, that service as well in our career discovery program. So our uh, career communities include education, business, arts, communication, and technology, sciences and health profession, and my favorite, the careers with social impact, otherwise known as CSI. Um, so CSI launched in September 2016 as a thoughtful response to request from students to have more service uh, opportunities, and as well as a sort of visual response to the perception that maybe we cater just to uh, finance consulting. Uh, in putting together this program, um, we definitely curated online resources and advising. We have identified targeted employers. Uh, we have done career treks, which have been hugely popular, and Dawn might touch on that a little bit. Yeah. We have winter study for our students to shadow alumni. We have alumni panels, and my favorite, stipends for, a super, for summer internships. All of those go into uh, what makes up each of our career communities and are all um, geared towards making sure that each student has a job for the summer and has a job when they graduate. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Dawn so she can talk a little bit more about the internship. 
Sure. So hi, my name is Dawn Delia, and my role at the Queer Center is manager of alumni and parent engagement programs. I have to tell you, I've been here for 21 years, and way back 21 years ago, we would tell a first year student, go home, lifeguard, do, do those types of things, but it has become a, a competitive market and we really have a lot of first year students that are very enthusiastic and excited about getting involved in any way they can with the Career Center. Um, so I manage the alumni sponsored internship program and just, I'll, I'll tell you more about that in a minute, but just to go along with what Michelle was saying, 40% of our interns were in, in careers with social impact, government, law, public policy, environment, nonpro nonprofit, and social entrepreneurship. Um, gave out 143 grants, totaling approximately $600,000. Um, these are life-changing internships for students. I'll give you a couple of examples, and then I have some quotes if you can bear with me for a second, but uh, we had a student who worked uh, with children um, with autism, living with autism, and so now she's interested in going into child development. Or there are students that have done this and now they're considering grad school. The other fun thing about, about these internships is they are exploring fields that they never even considered before. You know, because they, they have a limited view and so our goal is to educate them in all different types of ways. So if, th these are just a couple of quotes from this past year. My interest include Alaska economic and policy and Arctic economic policy. I'm looking at particularly international policy and math courses that before this internship I had not considered. I'm also more seriously looking at graduate school programs in economics, political economy, and public policy. And this young lady worked at the Alaska Department of Re Revenue Tax Division Economic Research Group in Anchorage, Alaska. There's a young lady who worked with a social justice film company and she said the internship gave her a deeper, much deeper insight into social justice issues such as immigration and prison reform. I started this internship due to my interest in both film and social justice, and my time here has definitely satisfied and nurtured those interests, but the work I have done has also introduced me to a new field I'd never considered, investigative journalism. Um, that's one other one. Um, I drafted memos about a series of briefings on advancing technologies and energy, in the energy industry, including advancements in hydroelectric turbines, wind turbines, local heating, cogeneration power. Attending these briefings allowed me to gain important insight into current industry growth insight that you can't gain in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it, it's really, it's just so much fun to read these. I, I get the reports in August and they send pictures. We had three students working at the Center for Disease Control and they went to the museum and they all put Ebola suits on. So I mean, you know, it's, it's almost like a holiday present opening up all these things. I'm just, I'm just so excited about that. But anyways, so that's one program we have. So in, in 2014, um, as I say, we decided, well, I decided that first year students needed some sort of option because you know, we we had not offered this to them before. And so I think about 20 to 25% were first year students th this past year. Um, in addition, I, the, we have a course called SPEC 21, Experience in the Workplace, an internship with Williams alumni or parents. So I reach out to parents and alumni and my colleagues who are counselors give me ideas as well. And so I will ask them if they would be willing to create a winter study internship for the month of January. And what's exciting is you can um, do an advertising internship in New York City, or you, you could uh, go to a startup in um, California. First year students are limited to Berkshire County, but what they've tried to do is cultivate some there. So we have a rotational one in, in the communications office, Mass Mocha, the Clark, BART Charter School, you know, we, we have a, a few that are available, but the great thing about the winter study course is students can do this every single year. Um, and at times this is used as what they call a screener, so sometimes if they do well, they might be offered a summer internship or a full-time job. I'm sorry, I'm, I just need to back up and just tell you about the alumni sponsored internship program. So it's not that the students have to work with alumni, it is alumni, primarily alumni, and some parents that have actually either given gifts or endowed funds for students to do this. And this, this program is growing and growing and you know, we anticipate more. Okay, so let's see, what else can I say? Um, winter study, we even have one with the Williamstown Theater Festival locally, uh, a rotational internship there. So that's 
a lot of what I do, but I'm also, the past year and this year, I'm involved in, in helping create uh, what we call career treks. So there's an academic department that funded this for us, and so we created a, a foreign affairs career trek for students interested in international affairs. So we made a connection at the United Nations. We stopped there. We had two briefings. We had a tour. We met with a financial attache, um, who's a Williams grad. We went down to Virginia. We went to the Pentagon for a tour. We had an alum who was there, but unfortunately she was in China, so we couldn't connect with her. But we also went to the Brookings Institution, Capitol Hill, the State Department, and a few other places. And we connected with 15 different alumni. And so th this was more of an academic e experience, but also educational as far as the different types of opportunities that are available. Um, we always have one that goes to Wall Street. That, that's been on the books for a long time. Last year, we, we did one um, for startups in Boston. And then we, we actually went to a, a alumni, uh, the alumni in New York City were having a tech startup type of a networking event and invited us. So we brought a group of students. I know that Michelle is working on one this year. I'm, I'm working on the foreign affairs career trek. And then um, my colleague, Tonio Palmer, who is our new entrepreneur in residence, is working on a startup career trek. And so the, the last thing that I, I will say to you is I, I'm working with Tonio Palmer. This is something new and exciting. Um, We've had someone who's helped us with students interested in entrepreneurship, but now we have an in-house person who's an actual entrepreneur um, talking with students interested in startups, and so I'm, I'm helping him during his, his first year, and I just have to say I love working at Williams. I don't have any children of my own. I feel as though many of these kids are mine. In a way, I, I kind of walk through them with, through this journey, and it's just a, a wonderful place to be. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Teddy Weiss. Um, I'm a junior at, at Williams. I'm from New York City. Um, I'm a political science and an economics major. Um, to give you kind of a sense of, of my background, how I've spent uh, the last three summers at Williams, um, I have worked in, in the financial office at Christie's Auction House. Uh, I worked in the publications and editorial department at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Uh, last summer, I traveled around the world for, for two months taking photos for a travel company. And this summer, I'm headed to a political consulting firm. So I'd like to think I, I kind of epitomize the, the liberal arts experience, um, kind of certainly all over the place. Um, but I think that's, that's the value of, of a liberal arts education, that kind of the diverse experiences and, and broad range of skills going into, uh, into the job market. Um, I would not have been able to, to make my way into all these different industries without the Career Center and, and their help and advice over, uh, over the last three years. So starting with, with the programming uh, that the Career Center provides for, for students, in a given week, uh, you may be able to attend an info session uh, from the Red Cross or from the Peace Corps, but also from Goldman Sachs. You know, there's, there's an incredibly diverse range of, of industries that come to campus, um, which, which I think helps prove the point that, that the Career Center is about career exploration. So you, know, you don't walk through, through the front door knowing exactly where you want to go, and, and the Career Center will, will help you tweak you know, the, the final steps. But it's very much about introducing you to, to industries and to companies that, that you didn't know existed before. Um, also, I mean, to the, the technical part of, of um, the help that the Career Center provides students, I've had my resume and my cover letter tailored countless times to all these different industries, um, something I, I certainly wouldn't know how to do or how to do correctly um, with, without the help of, of people like Michelle and Don. Um, I also think uh, another point to, to highlight about my career exploration process is our alumni network, uh, which is incredibly response, responsive and, and very helpful. Um, as a freshman, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. So I opened up our, our alumni network and sorted it by categories of, of industries and job types that I thought I'd be interested in. And I reached out to uh, 15 alums, everywhere from uh, NBC to the Met Opera, you know, a kind of broad range of, of industries. And every single person uh, that I reached out to got back to me. And every single person uh, offered to set up a phone call and to talk to me about what they did and, and how they could be helpful to me. And I think that that's very much embodies what 
the alumni network is at, at Williams and how it exists to help students. That you know, once once you walk across the stage and, and leave Williams, you're certainly not done with with the Williams community. And I've I've found that uh, it's it's actually quite an active community that alums are are looking to give back and to help students. Um, also, as as evidenced by uh, the winter study internships and and uh, a lot of the work that that Don does. Um, and and finally, I think in trying to decide what it is that I'm interested in, in pursuing, I often have these kind of spontaneous questions or, or uh, you know, need a, a moment of advice. And so the Career Center has quick questions, which are, are kind of walk-in hours uh, every day for about three hours, I think. Uh, so you know, any kind of last minute question or, or idea comes across uh, and, and you need some help with it, you know, you, you walk through the door and there's someone there that's, that's waiting to help you. And I think um, that's very much what, what the Career Center is about. When Don talks about it feeling like a, a family, um, that's, I also work in the Career Center, you know, that said. Um, I, I've gotten to know the people there very well. And, and they really do believe in, in William's students and, and in our ability to kind of pursue what it is that, that we're interested in. Um, so, so that's to say, I, I certainly haven't made up my mind about what I want to do, uh, but the Career Center has been there through every step of my career exploration, and, and they aren't just about um, you know, how to help you in the beginning and, and how to help you in the end, but it's about the entire journey, that they'll, they'll provide uh, helpful advice throughout the entire process, uh, and I'm, I'm especially thankful for that. Hi, I'm Isabella Wang. I am a junior economics major here, and I'm also on the women's golf team. Um, so I guess I'll just kind of share my um, journey of how I've kind of explored different fields of study and what I wanted to do ultimately in terms of career choices. So as a freshman, I knew I wanted to major in economics, but I just didn't really know what that would mean. Um, it's a liberal arts school, and it's not like we take accounting classes or um, any specific technical class. Um, but over winter study, that was kind of a moment where I had some more time um, to kind of decide what I wanted to do in terms of my summer internship. So I definitely reached out to the Career Center, um, set up meetings um, with them, and they kind of helped me with my resume. Um, and then I kind of decided, you know, like I wanted to explore business. And so kind of similar to what Teddy said, I went on the alumni portal and I typed in like people who were in IT, um, business, finance, uh, marketing, like a very broad, um, a lot of industries. And I remember staying up one night in the library just sending out like 50 or 60 emails because I assumed like the whole idea of cold calling was that people would not respond to you ever. So you would just have like the more the, the better, right? Um, and the next week I just got bombarded with people <laughs> replying to me and I was like, oh my goodness, they actually want to talk to me. Now I have to schedule all these calls. Um, so that was really exciting and I think it really speaks to the people here at Williams, the alumni network. And it's really about, you know, the fact that they really want to help you throughout your whole process. Um, and so kind of talking to different people, I, just, I, I felt like um, finance or business was kind of where I wanted to go. And uh, during the winter study, I uh, applied to a program called Girls Who Invest. Um, and the school definitely helped me even hear about this program. And that program is what I did during the summer of my freshman year. That really changed my experience in terms of um, knowing that finance is a broad encompassing idea. I think a lot of times people think finance just means investment banking or consulting, but it's really broad and there's a lot of different areas for someone who's interested in business. Um, you, it's really based off of your personality, what you want to do, what fulfills you. And I think by talking to alumni, by talking to the Career Center, those are um, specific like nuances to a job or an industry that most people don't really get if they're just looking at a job description. Um, so I worked freshman year after my uh, program at the Bill Gates Investment Office. The following summer as a sophomore, I worked at Loomis Sales um, in their San Francisco office on the trading floor. And um, I just got an internship f at Guggenheim for investment banking this summer. And um, in terms of Guggenheim, um, that is really a huge um, Williams connection. Um, a lot of the alumni came, interviewed us, and after I got r through my first round, we had dinner together. Um, and it's definitely a community, and I think it's great because you know they alluded to the breadth of the different industries uh, people can explore. But for me, I mean, I knew finance was what I wanted to do, and the depth of that connection has been really great and tremendous. Um, and yeah, definitely 
um, very helpful through every step of the way, very open, open doors to everyone, and especially as a freshman. Um, so yeah, I've been really happy with my experience, and you have all, they've all helped me um, through my process. Great, thank you. Yeah. So families, now you've had the opportunity to hear just a little bit about what we do. Believe it or not, there's quite a bit more. We'd love to hear your questions or thoughts or observations. We just, we'll open it up, please. Um, I, you've often heard about how difficult it is for uh, freshmen who just completed their freshman year to get internships um, for the summer. It sounds like that's not necessarily the case with the Williams kids. So could you explain how you're different um, and what percentage of your freshmen do get summer internships after their first year? So why don't I start and then I'll defer over to Don, who's again really the expert. So we're encouraging students to get going as early as possible in this process because we want to just naturalize it. We don't want this to be a stressful thing you have to do as a senior to figure out where this is all going and, and this after college project can be so anxious and uh, anxiety provoking. So first years um, have complete access to everything we do. In fact, they have been showing up in great groves and they have access to Handshake, so brand new platform that we just purchased and migrated there over the course of the year will be over 2,000 jobs and internships. We also just joined a consortia called the Liberal Arts Career Network, which is another large database of internships. And so what Don can speak to, I think specifically, is the Williams provided opportunities and how that funding works and maybe that percentage of how many students are actually involved in the program. But overall, we increasingly see the interests of students who, who have coming from high school having done internships wanting to continue that process. Well, I would say I give credit to the team for onboarding first year students last year because it, it really kept them engaged. I can say two years ago, about a third of the students receiving grants were first year students. This year, out of 143, it was about 20%. So I would only know about that group, but all of our counselors meet with students and, and can help them through the, the process. But certainly, I mean, again, having these career tracks, we open it up to all students, and a lot of first years do get involved, and th they can begin to understand the alumni network and start making those connections as well. So I mean, I can't, you understand, I can't give you a specific number, but just the number that that receive the funding there. And one other thing I forgot to say, um, related to the uh, winter study, um, if your son or daughter's interested in, in medical school, it wouldn't, I don't think it would happen during the, the, the freshman year, but we do have a, a, a course where they can shadow a doctor. So they can do it once locally, and then they can do it once anywhere, offsite. So how do you handle a student um, who really doesn't have any idea what they want to do in their future? Um, what, when they come to you and they say, I have no idea. What, how do you guys handle that? We open our hands and say, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and in some ways, I, I, that's, that's actually true. We have a, careers, uh, <clears throat> a discovery uh, career counselor who specifically works with our first and second years um, in helping them to identify things they might be interested in or passionate about. And some of the ways that he does that is with um, assessment tools that are designed specifically for college students. Um, and he also talks to them about the different career communities and encourages them to explore them in more depth. We also have resources which sort of give um, written information about different industries as a way of understanding the language and understand the culture and understanding what exactly is involved in a particular career path. And complementing that is um, conversations with alums who might be doing something interesting that the student um, could very well decide to explore further. So it's starting with the initial conversation and uh, assessment uh, test and then uh, a series of action plans for the for the first year and second year. And how does that, excuse me, how does that work? Do they, do the freshmen have to come in and request, hey, I want to sit down with somebody and go through an assessment, I have no idea what I want to do, or do, is that part of the freshman experience that they, so is it on them or on? 
Well, I, I think a little bit of it is on them, but we are concerned about getting started early. And so they come into the office, and if it's um, during the conversation, it's clear that maybe they're uncertain about what it is they want to do. Sometimes it's uncertain about what they want to do because they want to do everything. And then there is, I absolutely have no idea. We take both. Um, and if during that initial conversation, um, it's determined that perhaps they would benefit from an assessment test, then um, we make that available to them. And, and for both the freshmen, I'm talking freshmen, freshman internships and freshman your winter term, whatever the, is there a list at their disposal of you know, here are the internships or the classes available that, you know, like you said, about following a doctor? Okay, so th this is our internship book from last year. We're actually going to have everything online so students can see this after hours. Um, you, you can't see this picture, but this young lady, Kendall Lee Otley, worked at the New England um, Wildlife Center, and she's giving milk to a baby skunk that was abandoned by its mom. Um, but <laughs> anyways, so all of the reports are in here. So they have access to this, it, it will be online. Um, and as far as the winter study internships, again, we post that on our online platform. I've sent out messages. The syllabus is, is on our website as well. So they, they have the, the access. Do, do parents also have that access to give them a little push along? <laughs> um, I, well, I would say for, for the, well, the, even for the alumni sponsored internship program, yes, I mean, all of that is, accessible to you. We, we're updating our website right now, so you'll see something fresh soon, but yes, it will be there. So for the alumni sponsored internship program, I have two application deadline dates. Um, because for example, if someone receives an internship in the State Department that's unpaid and they find out in January, they, they can't wait until April to find out. So I have fewer students that apply in February, but that's really important. Then the other deadline I have is in April. Why do I do it so late? It's because these industries don't make decisions until later. You know, the, the organizations don't. So if you wanted to um, work for a senator or in, in some nonprofits, they don't make those decisions in, until much later. I, I love that um, comment, by the way. Um, we definitely encourage parents to um, look at some of the materials that are available. We even have a newsletter um, that we um, allow anybody to subscribe to, which is to keep track of the exciting things that we're doing at the Career Center. Um, can you access uh, the syllabus or the syllabi for winter study? It's generally on our website, so if you come across something that's exciting and you want to share it with your son or daughter, um, we would encourage you to do that. But the deadline for most of the internships has already passed for winter study, but um, alumni sponsored is, is still open. Yeah. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out the roadmap for them. Right? So I understand that, that there is a database and handshake and they can go and look at the stuff and do emails or call prospecting. But what's the roadmap? What are they supposed to do? So they come to school, I heard that I think you said 67% have either visited you guys or sat in a, in a group meeting, which says 30% haven't. So, okay. so, so what happens now? Right? Are, are we supposed to make sure they come and visit you? Uh, is there a deadline for things? Is there a resume to be written? I'm, I'm just trying to figure out from here to, to summer. Sure, so that, that's a great question. So, are all of you familiar with Rob White, who's the director of parent programs? He's the one who actually um, organized this panel, and you'll see him all around campus. So over this summer, before your students got here, he sent you all a message in which your students were invited to our design thinking for first year. It's called Design Your Williams Experience. So almost 50% of the class has attended those sessions, and we did multiple sessions of those. So that was a 90-minute investment of your students' time to think about how careers are gonna fit into their four-year plan. So that was the, the first touch point, and that happened right in the beginning of September. So you might wanna circle back with your parents, or excuse me, with your students as parents, and say, you know, did you have the opportunity to participate in the Design Your Williams program through the Career Center? If they did not, your student can come in and meet with Mike anytime. They can schedule that appointment through Handshake, and they can personally begin working with him we especially enjoy students who are undecided. In fact, 
we try to disrupt many of the students who are sure they want to be a doctor and, and, and so to think much more broadly initially and through the courses they're taking and experiences they're happening ultimately make that selection. Now we don't have a goal that 98% of the first years are going to come into the Career Center so we are there to support them. We would like to get up near 80 plus percent. We would like to make sure that all first years know who we are, where we are, what the resources are. But candidly, some first years are, for example, in your case, you have a, a varsity athlete. You know, your son is gonna be very challenged in terms of his time. If he has time and he wants to do a summer internship next year versus you know, focusing on the football, he should absolutely get in and speak with us. The sooner, the better. How does it work logistically, like geographically? Like if a kid is from, like you were from New York and you got all your internships in New York. So can a kid like if uh, from one area to look for the internship in the other geographical area? Okay, so, so let, me, let me back up. I may or may not have mentioned that through the alumni sponsored internship, I'm working now with about 31 different either endowed funds or gifts most of them are what's called restricted. So, for example, I have a craft internship, and so it's a nonprofit in New England, but then there are some, like Mead, which is broader, which is more related to policy and government types of internships. I can tell you that um, 26 states were represented from our students interning, and in 11 different countries. So students intern all over the world. There are a few that might designate, like if it's South Africa or, or some particular country or, or the Caribbean, you know, we, we have a couple of those as well. So I mean, students obtain the internship first and then they apply to the program. The process is then um, Don and I read them and then we also disperse them out to the, the counselors and, and at times we also ask some outside people to look at to evaluate the applications. And, and uh, this past year I think we had about a, a, almost 100 as far as a gap, as far as the number of students that applied for internships and the funding that we had available. Any other questions? This is your chance to get the inside scoop on how this whole career project works. Yes? Um, to talk a little bit more about the process to follow up on um, Benjamin's question. Um, so it, it sounds as if I have a freshman, and it sounds as if winter study would be a great time to you know, create the resume, brush up on, you know, have, bring it into, have it reviewed, create a, a cover letter, you know, a standard one that's then customized. Um, at what point should she plan to, as, as Isabel and Teddy did, you know, send out the letters to the alumni and really start investigating the different areas that she would be interested in? Would that be like the February, March time frame? Or? I, I can speak to that a bit because I, I, I counsel um, all years. And so what happens is if the, the, your son or daughter comes in early, uh, we can start that resume and cover letter process that day. Um, and we encourage them to come in early because there are certain industries that hire early. And so if uh, we've got a, a resume and cover letter ready to go, they're situating themselves in a position to succeed. Uh, the alumni piece of it, sometimes it takes a while to build that rapport with the alum, and so that can be started from day one. Um, again, there are certain industries um, which would allow some students to come in during winter study to start that process. Uh, but we always are encourage them to come in sooner rather than later. And, and I would say too, it, it might be a little intimidating for someone first coming in and they say, well, a vice president of some company is an alum, why would they want to talk to me? So we, we coach them through that process, but also this is why we're bringing back alumni to have informal conversations with students so they realize, you know, they're, they're, you know we share something, we share this experience. So that is, that is the connection that comes in. And so, I mean, all of the counselors are bringing in alumni all the time. We have people coming in for information sessions. And again, it's just to try to put students at ease that these wonderful folks are willing to help. I mean, as I say, I've been here all this time. I can't tell you how dedicated our alumni are. After you want to hear all kinds of stories, you know, we brought students to New York a long time ago. Um, and 
I brought students specifically to Nickelodeon, and they ended up being on a live television show, and they didn't know it. And it, it but, but you know, I mean, so there's a lot of fun, fun things th that happen. But you know, again, it, it's hard. It's just easy for us to say, talk to this person. But I, I just think that one on one, or you know, you have a group of 20 students that are attending an event, that starts the ball rolling. So unless there's any other questions, I'd like to actually end by asking Teddy and Isabella a question. So what do you wish someone had told your families when you were first year and or any good tips on how families can help their students be successful from a safe distance? Well, I, I think it, it responds to, to many of your questions that uh, you should walk through the front doors of the Career Center as early as, as you can and, and certainly uh, suggest that, that your son or daughter do that because it's very much um, a, a kind of internal independent process that you know Isabel and I find it in ourselves to pursue what it is that we're interested in as opposed to you know being told what we're interested in and then you know following uh, you know what some prescribed you know pipeline if, if you will um, you know I, I wish I had been told on, on day one that on day one you should be in the career center starting to think about uh, what you're going to do after Williams and, and throughout your, your career at Williams as well because uh, it, it certainly isn't a place that, that you show up at the beginning of senior year and expect um, you know, that you'll use it for a little while and then you're well on your way. It's, it really is a kind of career exploration process over your entire four years at, at Williams. Um, and I think for me, I mean my parents live in Taiwan right now and I remember telling them oh, I've gotten an internship this summer. And they were just like, what? What have you been doing? Like, you, you're interested in finance? And they were very confused because they didn't really push me. But again, I had the resources available. I mean, they send emails out, especially when I study. There's a lot of events for freshmen to attend to kind of understand the process. Um, and I think for my parents looking back, they, I think they just realized that it's less about um, maybe like, the grades or you know the hard things to put on the resume a lot of it is just using um, Williams as a resource and um, I think like for me as a freshman to kind of you know how do freshmen even get internships I mean I didn't really have anything on my resume either I've never had a job co before coming into college but again it's just like talking to people who kind of know the nuances of maybe you should use a specific you know your club that you're interested in how can we tailor this to show some of your skills um, which I think, again, the Career Center helps immensely. Great. So we'll leave you with three tips. So one, when you check in with your son or daughter about you know, the interesting career panel that you went to, you might want to ask them if, if they have made a connection over there yet. Because again, there's very friendly coaches. They don't need a huge reason. They certainly don't need to know what they want to do yet. They should just go over and introduce themselves. It could be there be quick questions any afternoon, or they can schedule an appointment. Secondly, your students need to fill out their profile on Handshake. If they fill out their profile on Handshake, they will then get the targeted emails about these amazing career conversations, for example, yesterday with Nancy Van Doyen, or these internship opportunities in their industry areas, because they will select which industries they think they might be interested in. So critical, step two, is that they go in and fill out that profile. And then thirdly and finally, and this is for you guys, Go to our homepage, bottom right hand corner is the newsletter. So once a month, you will get a newsletter. And again, from that safe distance, you'll have a sense of exactly what's going on in the Career Center. So if there's things that you're interested in, like you see, oh, what's that etiquette dinner? And you think your student should check that out. At least you know there's an etiquette dinner that you could encourage your student to go to. Certainly all the information about winter study and summer internships and these incredible resources. We didn't talk at all about the recruiting program, about this world-class mentoring program that we're building right now, or several other areas, all of which will be addressed in the newsletter. I guess last, feel free if you have internship leads or ideas for us, don't be a stranger. You can find us again directly through the staff section of our website. We love to engage parents. Much of the programming that we provide relates directly to families. So, <coughs> you also are welcome to work with us. So thanks again. I hope your weekend goes extraordinarily well, and we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you.